It was definitely always a Western. I think I started off thinking, but when I rewatched a lot of Westerns, each one of them seemed quite different from the next. You know, there seemed, if you watch the, uh, the very noir Westerns of High Noon, and then you watch the action adventure Westerns of Peckinpah, or you watch the comedy Westerns of Mel Brooks, or yeah, so, or the melodramatic Westerns of the 50s. It does feel like a kind of genre that you can constantly bring in other genres as well, really. So I was thinking a lot more about a noir structure, so keep it much shorter and tighter than um, a sort of kind of Western that would be three hours and very languid. So I guess I was thinking about mixing the noir time frame with a Western. When I was a young, a young film buff, I worked in a cinema in Edinburgh called the Cameo Cinema. And in 1990, Tarantino came and did a talk and showed Reservoir Dogs. And it was a big moment in my life. It became, it was a turning point in someone that was making something that was essentially quite art house, but using very references that were different from people's references up until that point very sort of B movies and action movies and um, I think part of when you say the end shootout in relation to Tarantino I think Tarantino's influence are the same as my influence so I think if you watch a film like Assault on Precinct 13 um, there's much more of a ah that's you know there's a strong influence of a film like Assault on Precinct 13 and I think that would be a strong influence on Tarantino as well Assault on Precinct 13. Luckily, if there was any difficulties, then the fact that it was low budget and the fact that it was Michael Fassbender was in it kind of evened up the scales. So it made it kind of easier to sell. You know, I've, I've got a great, one of the best actors in the world right now, you know, and um, the script, I worked really hard on the script and the script, people were responding well to the script. So. When you've got a decent script and a, a great actor attached, then it makes it much easier to sell. And I was working with people that were only interested in, in kind of the career, careers of young, breaking the careers of first time filmmakers. So I wasn't working with like American money that really they want to see a profit. I was working with people that they invest now and then maybe I'll make a film in three films time that makes money. So that's not so bad. When it's sunny, it's easier, but the risk is huge. So we didn't have anything what they call um, wet weather cover. Usually you, you would have, if you were shooting indoors, you'd have a, a system in place to, to make it waterproof. And we didn't, we just didn't have that. We couldn't afford it really. And um, so we just took the risk. And you know, we knew there was 70% chance that the weather would be great in that time in New Zealand. and. Sometimes it rained, but a weekend on our days off, you know, just incredibly lucky, but it was a gamble. Um, I think worst is when you shoot kind of uh, places like the plains where there's dust. I think dust is the worst because the equipment, if it's sandy, is getting absolutely wrecked. But I think that's a lot worse than uh, rain because rain, you can just, you can shove a few umbrellas up and you're all right. Well, I mean, I, I never went to film school and, and, and the, the thing I learned quite quickly is you have to start making films and making them and making them. And I, I made them for maybe 10, 15, 20 years before I made my first film with a budget even. So um, keep making and keep making and making them. And I wouldn't say make them for calling cards. Don't make them to try and show people what, how good you are or anything. Make them because you enjoy making them and make them things in their own right. Like they've got to be, they'll work better if they're actually great little short films in their own right and not calling cards. You know, that people, if your short's good enough as in itself, it's, if it's like a good short, then people will pick up on it. But um, I think n not to think of the future, just think of the project you're on, what you've got, concentrate on that and the rest doesn't matter, you know. 
and as well the script it's all scripts king you know and queen it's uh, so if you don't know a writer then start writing yourself 